no matter how you slice it, this is hard work. So we took the flail mower over top of the, the old tomatoes, including the wooden posts, chops most of them up. We took the flail mower over some pepper beds, did a good job. Did the flail mower, actually the bottom was done by a tractor with a uh, bush hog. Did the flail mower up in here. Now flail mower works great on level land. Oh, by the way, I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. We're doing this uh, demonstration garden here at the Sustainable Homestead Institute. And essentially what we're doing is we're mowing down the fall, or actually the, the previous crop, which also included grass and hairy vetch and other stuff. We're keeping the wildflowers. Look at these wildflowers. These things are beautiful. Keeping the wildflowers. And there's cut flowers in those beds there. We're gonna wait till the tops die before we flail mow those. And that patch over there has got cut flowers too. But what we're doing is we're getting all the biomass off the top and the flail mower chops it up. Now the flail mower chops it real fine like that. But the bush hog, which I'm not gonna walk down there. The bush hog chops it up pretty good too. But we're gonna till out much wider and more level beds, sort of like terraces. And you know, you learn stuff from this. You can watch a lot of videos. But you don't really learn anything until you actually do something, until you get out here and give it a try. Uh, you know, because these beds are great, but the flail mower really only works on level surfaces. You know, it'll go up and down these hills, but it'll, it'll cut like butter on level surfaces. Now, we were scything this, and scything works okay. Uh, scything was uh, something that, it's fine. It, it doesn't hurt anything. It cuts a long grass. That long grass can be used as mulch. And you'll see... This bed here had been sived a couple times and uh, mulched, and it, and it looks about as shallow as the grass. See that bed up there had not been uh, scythed. So you see how much taller it is? When you scythe it, you're able to take down the, a lot of the biomass and use it as mulch. But down over here is the bed into season with the flail mower. Now I moved the flail mower up to four inches because these are raised beds and it's bobbing around and it's getting, it's really just wearing my ass out. Um, but ultimately, some of these beds are actually soft enough now that the, uh, the flare mower can get stuck too. So I'm not cutting it like you would a, a um, market garden because that flare mower on the BCS tractor will go down to about a half an inch. And I've got the anti-skull bar on it. But the thing of it is, the anti-skull bar is like a, a big cylinder, plastic cylinder, and you can, it makes you slide around here. So the key here is um, we're going to adapt these terraces to be more level instead of having that water channel in the back, which was useful. We're going to make it more level. And then as we get down to the bottom where the slope is lower, we're going to make big wide terraces and then um, either keyhole them. That means while it's real wide, we'll have a central walk path on the back because we still want this central walk path. That's where all of our water accumulates, spreads out on contour. But we also want that water to soak into the beds. So uh, we'll keep the terrace system, expand the terrace widths, make them more level. Like there might need to be a path over here from this side because it's really, the, the beds narrow into a, like a cone. So we might need another cross path here. Um, actually, there's a cross path over there. It's just, you're not going to know until you try. I know you're watching videos. I know you're trying to learn how to do permaculture and and a market garden, and you're going to just grow an incredible garden and feed yourself, um, it, it, you have to get out and try it because it doesn't always work the way you want. This particular area was heavy clay. Now it's less heavy clay, but it's still, um, you know, we got biomass clover growing. Uh, this fall, the only thing we're going to plant out here is greens and cover crop, oats and, and mass. By the way, Sustainable Homestead Institute has a thresher, so you can do thresher demonstrations. Uh, we got sun hemp down on the bottom there. Um, we've got a lot of wildflowers and different things. We've got different types of beds being produced. And you can really get a hands-on uh, learning experience here. It, you, you know, you have to let us know in advance if you're interested. You have to see if there's a class available. But using the proper tools, because we can side this, we can flail mower it, or we can use a tractor, use the proper tools makes a huge difference. 
these swales, so this is a, a, a ditch and a swale, these swales are too high to quickly do them with the flail mower. Scything them work great. These swales are too narrow to do them with a tractor. The tractor cuts about seven feet at a time. It needs about a seven foot clearance. But down there, there's big wide terraces. Very easy for the tractor to go through. Did four or five swipes and was done. Now I have a demonstration of the sun hemp down there that I'm definitely gonna do with the BCS because it is, it is exciting to cut this stuff down. You can see over here where the soil got a little softer. You know, we got good soil. Uh, we don't need to till it every year. Um, but it was too soft to put the flail mower through. So what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to I want to raise up the flail mower and do I still have to get this section here. Um, but once the flail mower is done, I'm going to re-measure my contours. I'm going to reframe. I'll take all these posts out and I'll put some wooden stakes in. I'm going to reframe my terraced beds, and then I'm going to use. Um, some deep tillage to break up and move the soil around. I have a, a, a vertical rotary plow and then I have a railer tiller, but I'm not going to do deep tillage. I'm essentially going to try to level these out with a two to three inch till. So all I want to do is mix up the organic material on the top of the beds. Now there's a bunch of manure from the cows that we're just going to sling on the beds. We're going to, it's aged manure, all the aged manure we can find, we're going to sling on the beds and then I'm going to do what's called a shallow tillage just on the surface to incorporate that because most of these beds are softer now they're not the hard clay that I was dealing with before but I'll widen out these beds so that we have a long wide bed and there's a, going to be a bund on the end the bund is a little mound so this is slanted the bund will be a little mound and then it'll be flat all the way back here because again we do want the water to spread and soak with as dry as it's been this year in 2020 you're not gonna get this kind of biomass growing if you don't have good water soakage. We're not out here irrigating. We did irrigate a few things, but most of the stuff is not irrigated. But again, contour paths, use of terraces on slope of the land, uh, use of the buns and how and, and earthworks is how we kept this place watered out. Now we have a massive amount of grass. So I don't wanna see this, all this stuff here. I don't wanna till that underground. Okay, I don't need to feed the soil that way. By tilling an inch, two inches, at most three inches, I'm just gonna tear up the grass that was under there and, and, and mess up the roots. And I'll just go through it nice and quick, loosen up the soil around where we need to go, get the beds laid out. Now, once the beds are laid out, here's the exciting part. Once we have a good quality bed laid out, down here where the corn was, this is a good quality bed. I am gonna widen this bed out though. But once we have that, all we gotta do is broad fork. So we don't have to come back and do tillage. That means you don't need to own a BCS tractor. You don't need to own a full size tractor. If you design your growing areas the right way, you could lease the equipment. You could uh, you know, borrow the equipment. You could do a, like what I'm doing, I'm volunteering here and I give my labor, I bring my equipment and I volunteer here because we're doing so much more together. So whether you have a community garden, whether you have your own garden, get out there and practice. Now it's hot as hell out here and I'm getting out here in the heat. I got, uh, you know, I've been out here all day. I'm getting ready to wrap it up and go. It's about five o'clock. Um, but you see how much we got done? Scott mowed the bottom half. I flailed the top half. And I'm gonna finish up flailing tomorrow. I'm going to get some of these beds are going to stay raised beds like they are, but they're going to have, they're on the back side, it's going to go more level. Some of these beds are going to become wider and combined. We're working with nature here. We're working with the soil. Now, there's something important I want to, we were noticing earlier. We don't want to till this out or mow this out all one day. And I'll tell you why. You always want to leave strips like this sun hemp down there like these wildflowers. Because one thing that we, we talked about in previous videos, and I know the gardens look overgrown, I know there's so much going on, and you can see how overgrown it was. We should have got it a little bit before seed though. But one of the things that's going on here is that there's so many flowers, so much room for pollination. And we had small birds in here. We had 
well, there's, there's mice. When I mean, you get a lot of wildflowers, you're gonna end up with mice. But essentially, by not cutting everything, we're able to have, um, the birds can move, can migrate. Now, what I did see out here, and you can kind of hear them, is the grasshoppers and crickets. And we also, there was some potato bugs that ate a lot of our potatoes. So we, we know, I now seeing that, again, this pattern recognition, it's how you design the area. Seeing that, I do want to get uh, ducks out here or chickens out here. I don't know if that's going to happen, but, um, you know, a lot of this stuff, because we're not tilling the whole thing, because we're not cutting the whole thing, a lot of these uh, creatures will carry over, and crickets are great for fishing, uh, crickets are great duck food, or grasshoppers, there's grasshoppers in here too. Um, and, and that would kind of be a, another way to solve that problem because we don't spray anything in here. We don't, um, they, you know, they we're just, we're growing biomass and turning it into compost, and that compost on the beds is turning into better soil, better soils making better plants, and so on and so on. Anyway, I'm Justin Hitt from Prosperity Homestead. Visit me at www.prosperityhomestead.org. Join our mailing list. You'll find out about events and activities. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing here or why some things are designed a certain way, um, you know, I'm, I would love to hear that in the comments below. Thanks for watching.